This is Dr. Carroll, and this video is about linear sorts. Okay, so selection sort, insertion sort, bubble sort, cell sort, heap sort, merge sort, quick sort, they're all general purpose sorting algorithms. And the lower bound for a general purpose sorting algorithm is n times log n. Now, if we make some assumptions, then we can use that information to our advantage to get a lower, lower bound. Okay? Um, and so we'll be talking about in this video bucket sort and radix sort. Uh, both have a linear big O because we're um, putting some restrictions on them. So, so let's dive in. So with bucket sort, let's assume we need to assume that we know the maximum value that we're trying to sort. And then we'll make a bucket for each value that we're trying to sort. So uh, that's, that's a restriction. We need to be able to make that many buckets, um, which could lead to some problems. So once we have those preliminaries out of the way, then we have two steps. Put each value into its bucket and copy each value from the bucket in order back to the original array. Let's see it just to solidify this. Let's come up with a random array, 71953. So the first preliminary is that uh, we know the largest value. In this case, we're saying, hey, we're only sorting numbers between 0 and 10, for example. The next one is that we make a bucket for each one of the values here, which, which I've shown here as a, sort of an array or some sort of structure along those lines. And then we copy each of the values from the buckets. Um, oh, sorry, we, sorry. Step one, we put each of the values into its, its bucket. Okay. And then step two is we, we copy those values back into the original array and then we're done and they're in order. Now that works great if we can just put everything in its own bucket and, and away we go. So let's talk about efficiency here. So step one uh, is going to be order n and then step two is going to be order m where m is the maximum value. So then we have uh, the big O as being the, the, the sum of the two. Is this stable? Well, Yes. Um, it does, does it require extra space? Yes, on the, on the order of m for the, the maximum value. What, what's the uh, average case? Well, we could say it is n, order m, n, sorry. And then worst case is going to be the same. Is it adaptive? No, that's not going to speed up. Now, if we, th this is nice and it works if we can make that many buckets and we can know that about it. If we want to extend the benefits of bucket sort to more types of inputs, then we could use a, something like a radix sort. So let, let's talk about it. Let's go through the steps. So for each value, we're going to put it in a bin, we'll call it, based on its least significant digit. Then we're going to collapse all the values from the bins back into a single list. And then we're going to repeat the steps for each digit least to greatest. Now you may be scratching your head going, I don't see it. How does this sort? Uh, let's look into it more. To um, I think an example will help solidify some of these concepts. So we need an example with multiple digits in it really to see what is going on. Okay. So here we have this example, 125, 2,154, etc. And so for each value, we're going to put it in a bin based on its least significant digit. Okay, so first we're going to put 123 in a bin that's for all of the threes. Okay, so that has a least significant digit of three, as you can see indicated here. Then we're going to take 2,154, put it in the bin that has a least significant digit of four. 222 in the bin, least significant digit of two. Four, we're going to add it into the same bin here that has another number uh, already in it. Now it's important that we put it in the order of which we, we found it. So we need to put it at the back of the list in the bin. And that's important. And we go through and we do that for all of the values. And they're sort of in the for the ones digit. And then we just take all the lists and we combine them together. Now it, you still might be scratching your head saying, I don't see it. I don't, I don't see how this is sorting. It's just moving around data. Okay, well, just 
keep keep the faith that let's keep looking at this a little bit longer so now we, we go through now we're doing it on the tens digits okay and so we're gonna look at uh, 1560 and we're gonna put that in the bin for that has sixes in this in the second uh, least significant digit and this uh, number in the one that has for five etc now when we get down to four notice four doesn't have a tens digits well, it, it does. It's zero, and so we need to pad numbers that are smaller than what we're looking at. Or if you were extending this to strings, it needs to, strings need to be padded to be the same length, or at least take that taken into account. Okay, so that's the tens digits. Okay, you can already start to see a little bit of sorting in some ways. Okay, I see that this, yeah, this is going on, given that they have the same. Um, more significant digits, you can already start to see some of the sorting going on. Okay, so now we combine them again, and now we do it by the hundreds digit again. Uh, notice four is going to hang out here at the beginning, as it should, because it's the 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 smallest number. And then we're now doing it on the hundreds, and so the the numbers that have the lower values in the hundreds place are going to get closer to the beginning of the list than those with the higher values at the end now we combine again we're getting close to being sorted but we're definitely not sorted yet now this this fourth path the last path here because the the maximum width of a number is four digits we're sorting by the thousands sorts them because they're already sorted for all the least significant digits past the most significant. So when we put them in the bin here, they are sorted. Because if they have a, for example, if one of them had a 900 as its hundreds place, it's going to be near at the end of the list. Whereas if it's a hundreds, it's going to be closer at the beginning of the list. And so numbers get into the list based on their order here. And so as you can see, when we combine it, it actually is sorted. It is sorted as we, we have gone one, um, one digit at a time, one, one placeholder at a time. Isn't that kind of interesting? It's kind of magical in some ways, I think. Okay, let's look at some skeleton code. So we need to have the original array and we need to know the the string length, I mean, we could calculate that, but we'll just assume it's given. But we need to allocate some memory for bins based on the number of digits that we're going to have. In, the, in this case, digits are going to represent uh, integers, and so we're going to need 10. If you're doing strings or ASCII characters, you need 256. You also would probably want to do it lexicographically, so it'd be the other order. Okay. Um, and so then for each digit, right, that was the, the outer loop, going from the least significant to the most significant, we're going to put the values in the bins based on their digit, okay? And then so for each item in the array, we're, we're going to get the digit somehow, and, and we're going to assume that we can just access it as, with array notation. Can't really do that with integers, um, but uh, strings you could. But um, you we're going to just use this notation to suggest that's the digit of it. And then we're going to use that to put it to know which bin. That'll be the index into the right bin. And then we need to add the item. And now we need to add it at the end of the list. That's, that's very important. Now we need to, after we've added them all to the bins, we just need to walk through and combine the bins. So for each bin, for each item in, in that bin, we need to put it back in the original array and we'll just copy over the content since we had made a copy of it. And that's it. Isn't that pretty cool? So let's talk efficiency. So radix sort has to look at the entire value, whereas a comparison-based sort typically only look at the first few characters. And so that's not an apples to apples comparison there, as we are required to look at the entire value. So that's something to keep in mind. So the, the big O here is going to be the width times n, or the, the number of inputs, okay? The width, the maximum width times the number of, um, uh, times the number of inputs. Okay, well that's kind of cool, but 
What about w? Well, if w is a lot smaller than n, well, then it's clearly linear. But if it's actually larger than n, then it's at least n squared. Well, that's not great. Um, it's likely that w is going to be greater than uh, log of n uh, for digits, because um, then it would be log base 10 uh, if, if we were going to have unique values. But if it's ASCII values, then it, it could be log base 256 if we were going to use the whole set. If we're going to use the alphabet, it's going to be a lot less. Um, so that's something to take into consideration. If you're getting into a big O war discussion with somebody, you, you need to keep that in mind when you pull out your ha radix or uh, linear. Well, it's not that cut and dry. Let's talk characteristics here. Is it stable? Yes, it keeps them in order. However, uh, for a most significant digit radix uh, implementation that's going to use the lexographical order, it's not stable. Okay. Does it need, what's its extra space? It needs the sum of the width and, and the numbers, and the number of inputs to keep track. Aver, average case for efficiency, we, we've talked about it. It's the product of the width times the number of elements. And, and then worst case, though, is, is the exact same. So that can be very good if we can adhere to the uh, restrictions that it places. Is it adaptive? No, it's not. Well, that concludes the video for linear sorts, bucket sort, and radix sort.